In this tutorial, we'll be going through how to create realistic wood textures within Keyshot. So today we'll be using the wood advanced texture, and this is a procedural texture. So procedural textures, um, they have infinite resolution and infinite patterns because they are mathematically generated. Image textures that you download online, so PBR textures, are fixed. Because this is a procedural texture, there are a lot of parameters that we can change and tweak. So what I'll be doing is going through all of these and we'll have on the left hand side a wood texture and on the right hand side we'll be having the same wood texture but one of those parameters is going to be changed to be a little bit more extreme so you can see the difference that those values make. The ring width is adjusting the thickness of the wood ring and by the wood ring I'm meaning those lines going vertically upwards. The ring width variation can be found in the drop down just next to the ring width and this enables you to add variation to the width of the wood rings. Ring spacing variation controls the contrast of thick and thin ring shapes to represent different rates of growth of that um, hypothetical tree. Ring noise adds fluctuation to the rings and provides that kind of grainy look. Axial noise adds variations to the circular shapes of the rings, so if you push it too far like I have done with a value of 2, then it looks kind of wavy and it doesn't look realistic. However, you wouldn't want to reduce that down to zero as then those lines vertically would just be straight. Color noise is very similar to the ring noise that we saw, but instead of adding fluctuations to the rings, it adds splotches of color. Seasonal color noise adds variation to each color swatch as it blends together. And now as we get onto the knots, I've added a few knots into the standard Barrison wood texture on the left hand side. Um, and as you can see, colour and border of the knots, you can change those and uh, the general rule of thumb is that they should be darker than the colours of the rest of the wood. Knot density controls how many knots appear in the texture. The knot age controls the number of rings in the knots, so as the age goes up, the number of rings goes up and therefore the size of those knots also increases. The knot border size is the thickness of the border, so you can see those dark lines starting to edge through. Distortion is the irregularities in the knot shape and the branch scale controls the size of the knots. So this is slightly different to the age where it's controlling the number of rings. The number of rings will still stay the same with the branch scale, uh, but you can increase and decrease the size separate to those rings. Moving on to the grain with the knots removed, the grain color bleed controls how clearly defined each ring is. Axial graininess blurs the texture. Ring graininess adjusts the thickness of the wood rings. The grain scale adjusts the size of the grain grooves between the rings. And for this one I've had to change a few other parameters just so that the uh, changes are more obvious. For the grain thinness that controls the size of the grain grooves as well. And again I've had to change a few of those parameters to work together. Finally we have the seed. So this maintains the general look that you've created in all those previous parameters. Uh, but it does add randomness to each of those parameters to create a slightly different look. So if you can see on the seed 80, those lines on the very far right hand side, you may not want those. So changing the seed to any other number will add a slight randomness and most likely get rid of those lines. Now if we jump into Keyshot, I'll be showing you how I like to adjust the colour of the wood and try and match it to a reference image or in this case just the other parts of the shelf that you see in the picture. Right now that we're in Keyshot I have the shelf here and uh, those parameters that we were using for the standard sort of comparison previously I've already plugged all of those into this this shelf and this wood advanced texture. So these are the, exactly the same as the other wood in the scene just next to it. Uh, but you can see there's a few differences. So the color is slightly, slightly different. Um, the grain's going the wrong way and it's a lot shinier as well than these other, other parts here. So it looks a little bit out of place and doesn't look like the same wood. And I'm going to just go into the wood and show you how we can make those changes. So if I double click on the shelf, I can open the material graph here on the right. And you can see I've got parent node an advanced material and then the wood advanced texture going in. If I double click on the wood advanced node, 
you can see we have a few options here that we haven't gone over yet. So there's the scale, which is pretty self-explanatory, just how large that texture is. We have the angle here, and, it, and there's a drop down as well. But um, I prefer not to use this angle here. I usually like to use move texture. So just above scale, and the move texture tool will appear on your real-time viewer. So now what I can do is just grab the red rotation circle, drag it round, and I can also hold shift at the same time. And that will make sure that it moves in 15 degree increments. So now you can see also we've got this big line here. I think that's from the sort of center of the hypothetical tree trunk, I guess. Uh, so if I want to get rid of that, then I can just drag the texture out to the side. And that should be enough. I'll leave it there. You also notice that as I'm moving things around on my machine, then it's taken quite a long time to render out. Uh, it's not a particularly big scene or anything, but we do need to, to render out fairly quickly so that we can actually see the detail in the grain. So if we want to speed this up, what we can do is use the render region tool. So at the top here, I've got the region button. If it's not appearing, then you need to right click on the ribbon here at the top and there's region just here and make sure that's ticked. You can also press control, shift and R. And what this will do, it'll look a bit more like that. But what it will uh, do is just basically make the real time viewer resizable. So I can drag it down to be a small square and drag it over the area that I wanted it to render out. And you'll notice it renders out much quicker because my laptop now doesn't have to render out this entire screen. It's just that small box. So I find that useful whenever I'm making changes to textures that are detailed like wood, especially when I need to make subtle changes and tweaks to make sure that it's matching up a reference image or matching up in this case just the wood next to it. So the next um, part is the colors. So we have the seasonal colors here and we can change them all individually on the right just by opening up those color boxes. However, I prefer to use a color adjust node. So if I right click on the blue connector, I can right click utilities and the only the ones that are able to actually be used in this position between those two specific nodes will appear. Uh, so if I go color adjust, put that in the middle, double click, so the options come up on the right. And what we can do here is we can colorize. So I could drag that out. If I drag it out to extreme right, you can see that wood's turned bright red. So you just want to use it in tiny amounts, keeping it pretty light. I'm just pushing in a tiny bit of color. But we'll keep that white for now and see how far we can get with the saturation value and contrast. So I can decrease saturation. I can up the value, which will sort of brighten up the texture. And I can also up the contrast as well, which will make the, the grains possibly a little bit clearer. Um, and it will also darken the, darken the texture as well. So if I keep tweaking, Maybe a little bit less contrast, possibly slightly higher value. And also you've got to remember that the light is also going to affect the wood in the scene. So if I drag this over to the other side as well, compared to the other side, you can see we're actually a lot closer on this side. So it should be about right what I've done there. Now the other issue that we had is... Um, the shininess of the wood. So how can we do that? We can plug this into the roughness and to do that we can go into the advanced but on the lowest one down which is the plus and now all the different parameters that we can change will appear and we want roughness. So now if I drag that over there as well you can see we don't have anywhere near as much reflection. No, it's probably okay looking, uh, it looks about right to me, but it's always nice to have a bit more control. So if I, again, right click on the blue connector, open up utilities, and I want to put in a color to number. So what this will do 
If I press C on the keyboard with the color to number selected or go up to preview color at the top there. Now we won't be able to see anything else other than the color to number and it's turned into black, white and grey values. What we can do is we can decrease say the output to and that will darken the entire texture map. The darker the texture map is the more sort of glossy or uh, shiny the texture will be. And if we want to do a little bit more contrast we can start playing around with the input from and input to. And you can see now those grains uh, have a bigger, bigger contrast between them. Once you're done you can select the node again, hit C on the keyboard and you can see that's kind of made our wood a little bit shinier. Maybe a little bit too much so I might increase that output too. And I'm pretty happy with that. And finally the last thing to do is to plug the wood texture into the bump map. Just so that we've got a little bit of bump going on there. And if you wanted to change it, you can double click into the wood advanced and change the grain and bring bump height here. Um, we're going to leave it like that. It works exactly the same as any other texture map as well. So just by adding in a couple of utility nodes and manipulating the uh, texture a little bit, we can get a much closer color and much closer look to the uh, reference image or to the wood next to it in this case. So if you have any questions about that, then please leave a comment and I'll get back to you.